Hey there, folks. This is Today Life. And Zachopod. And welcome back to Work Time Fun. Got the King of the Castle tool here. Not too sure who that guy is. Kind of looks like FDR a little bit. Yeah, FDR or Dale Carnegie or someone. Hopefully, someone out there knows. Dale Carnegie is the guy who I think wrote the How to Win Friends and Influence People book? Yes, that's what I hear. Anyway, check out this classy music. Let's give a little warm up here. Just warming up. So help us win some friends. Uh oh. Nice. So that's it. This is like a uh, kind of a takeoff, of, like truth or dare. I guess could be used as a drinking game or something too. Yeah, Soft and mild. Yeah, I've totally played games where this one makes up rules. This is pretty... Kind of like King's Cup, I guess, but it's, it's kind of like King's Cup mixed with Truth or Dare, I guess, and it's... I guess you, the game tells people in the group what to do. Like, rem like remember nicknames thing. Or... And misogyny, of course, that's Truth or Dare, but there's like, give everyone nickname and call them for the rest of the game and things like that. Or say banana at any times. I want to eat a banana ten times. Wow, I'm quoting things from the future here. <laughs> yeah, we did one where it's like a like president and vice president. I can't remember the name of the game though. I love the sound effects. Yeah, it's so dramatic. But that's it. It's just a bunch of random stuff. It's not really all that great. But anyway, here's private number executive. And with all the failures with our previous private number games, I've gone ahead and taken a few courses on how to pick up women. So let's see how well this is going to work out. Notice we're in a much fancier restaurant here. Remember, it's easy to pick up girls. So what are you doing sitting home listening to this record? Here's how one young guy, Mike, recently picked up a girl. Listen. Listen to how Mike got things started. Hey, baby. You got nice tits. Hey, baby, you got nice tits. He's refreshingly direct and to the point. Now it's time for Mike to advance their relationship a step. He makes his compliment a little more romantic. Nice tits, baby. And you shouldn't try to pretend that they're not. Nice tits, nice tits. Girls like to be told they're pretty. And it's true. Hey, baby, you got nice tits, tits. You got nice tits. And that's all he says. Are you a page three girl? Just say, You got nice tits. She'll instinctively know you're sincere. Mike doesn't know much about art, but he knows what he likes. Nice tits. Boob knockers. Tits knockers. Boob knockers. Look at those knockers. Boob knockers. Tits knockers. Boob knockers. Look at those. Welcome. All right. So that was some interesting lessons there. So let's go ahead and try them out. Um, so this is uh, mama san I guess, of the uh, bar. Nice so, hey baby, um, you got nice tits? <laughs> Just a nice uh, belt? Sash? Uh-oh. I can just picture your parents. Okay, that didn't work out too well. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> I'm not sure either, but... <laughs> I don't think she was too happy with me and my pickup lines. Oh well, we tried. Yeah. Anyway, let's do this for real this time. Welcome. Now what? She likes interesting guys. She looks so bored. Well, it's an executive bar, so they, you know, don't get too many interesting people. Yeah, that's a good point. Splendid. Splendid. Well, let's give her a call. Positive. I've got a business proposition. Care to invest? <laughs> oh, wow. So that's kind of the theme of this whole like uh, executive bar is that you know they all want stock trading and business propositions and things like that. So it's kind of kind of a joke on the whole deluxe executive, I guess, hierarchy. 
like switch guys and time is money. Welcome. Pretty smooth euphemisms. After hours trading time. <laughs> and she says after hours trading time if you get a number <laughs> in the wrong spot but correct. I think she's judging us. She's just staring me down. Will you be my sponsor? <laughs> like a... <laughs> I'm not sure a sponsor for what, but okay. Hey. Will you help me with my problems? Drinking problems? <laughs> <laughs> Do we, yeah. That's two strikes there, I think so. <laughs> Welcome. Plasma TV. Yeah, man. Hope she doesn't get burned into her plasma TV. Let's go to Hawaii sometime. Kind of forward there. Yeah, it's a bit Just met you. I'm going to Hawaii. Hello, big dandy man's massage Then you can hang up on them in the middle if you press X. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. I like the massage parlor. Welcome. Love is okay, Zacho. <laughs> I don't know. Her, her gaze kind of scares me. Will you invest in me? So yeah, yeah. Are they looking for like people to buy their products or something? I don't get it. <laughs> this number is no longer in service. Man. Ouch. Monkey looking guys, you're in luck. <laughs> oh, trendy furniture. I didn't even realize it was trendy furniture. Like IKEA or what? I don't know. That's just cheap furniture. <laughs> Please be friends with me. That's it's pretty decent. Yeah. Again with the problems? Why are these <laughs> all these girls have baggage, don't they? And here's the failure reel. I could never date you. Ooh. He's yawning at us. That's not very nice. <laughs> the judger. I'll send the bill to your company. Man, that's just mean. Yeah. Company doesn't want to know I'm talking to whores. <laughs> I hate stupid men like you. <laughs> that she, she. That might be my favorite. Pointed out that I was like, like you. Uh huh. No chance. I like her expression. Because <laughs> she doesn't like smelly guys. Just give up on life already. That one's kind of harsh there. Wow, yeah. Not too happy. Don't worry, we have a happy ending though. Welcome. It's Mama san Yep. You're the first to get my number. Aww. Aww. How sweet. Let's give her a call. Man. <laughs> hundred bucks? Hundred bucks though. For guessing her number. Anyway, let's go reproduce. Oh, that sounds good. A <laughs> good way to segue. Well we got a happy ending from private number deluxe, <laughs> so or executive, sorry, so take it to the next level. Okay, this is Pollinator. I'm sure you've heard of this game before, um, when it was called Lunar Lander. This is how I originally knew it. <laughs> that dude is happy. Yeah. This is a nice... Uh, I don't know. Apple? 
Yeah, there's those apples. I think there's oranges in the background and he's holding an apple in his hand. Yeah, that's confusing. That was a good pollination. This is this one's kinda hard though. Actually there's a couple of levels in this, but you gotta beat the first level like fifty or sixty times before you can get to the next stage, and I think it's different gonna be him with different fruits in that picture. So and I'd never played this game enough because it's kinda boring. But anyway, um, you can pretty much bounce indefinitely here. I just wanted to show that off. It's really nice uh, artwork, though. Not touching the controls, it's just bouncing. And there we go, happy music. Happy guy, happy apple. Some ways you're pollinating yourself. Kind of a... Kind of reminds me of, like, sad Zelda music. Actually, the whole... You'll even notice it in a few seconds, too, but the whole, like, music theme of this whole thing is kind of Mario-esque and, like, Zelda-esque. Yeah, totally. It's like the underground level in Mario. Yeah. But just wait and see what happens when I start running out of fuel. I'll, I think in this one or the next one... I think it's this one. I waste fuel on purpose just to show it off. in the air. So see, it speeds up just like oh, Mario yeah. when you're running out of time, and it even plays the speed-up music that sounds very familiar to Mario's. Rough. So there we go. So let's take a break with the world clock. I mean, there's a lot of reproducing and dating there. I think we need to wake up from our dreams. Yes, this looks useful. So this thing is overtly complicated controls, and you can kind of make little electronic music with it, like that. <laughs> but that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, you can set the alarm, too, and I'll show that off in a second. First, check out my awesome beat there. At his height. And so watch me be a complete idiot here, because I, I set the alarm to be like 9.53 here, and then I... or 9.54, I think. But then I switched the time zone, and so <laughs> it never hits the alarm. <laughs> yeah, I miss it, because the alarm's off. And I'm trying to remember how the hell do you turn the alarm back on. <laughs> there we go. I found it. <laughs> that's saying it's time. Oh, that's the best one. Yeah. The robot one. Who wouldn't wake up to a robot? Yep. And of course, it's waiting for 9.54 and, you know... 2.53 right now, so... <laughs> and I'm waiting and waiting, and it's... Alright, it's almost 54. Oh, about to, alarm, alarm's about to go off. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I fucked it up. <laughs> Thing makes no sense. No, and I, I probably would have, should have re-recorded this, but I was, got so bored by it that, you know, whatever. It's not really that interesting. Oh, let's, let's have some karate then. Anyway, yep, karate superstar. We were a baseball superstar before, but now you can be a karate superstar. I think that, uh, directions are fairly simpler than the world clock. Yeah, karate punch. I will karate punch everything. Check this out. Take that cup. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> Not a karate superstar. No. I like the the banner in the background that says Test of Courage 92. <laughs> it's good to hear. Anyway, 
Yeah, so this is Karate Superstar. Uh, it's kind of a timing game. You gotta time this just right to punch the items thrown at you. And it's not just coffee cups with little kitties on them, or whatever the hell that is. No. And you can be a lady, too. Uh, but I am terrible at this game, just completely and utterly terrible. I think I can get past the first level, and that's about as good as I can do. Not destined to be a karate superstar, I guess. No, not this karate superstar. But yeah. There we go, level one, that's all I got. Second Dan. Harry Potter and the Black Leather Cunt by J.K. Rowling. It was nearly midnight. Harry Potter was lying in bed. Harry pulled out his dick. He looked at it happily for a few seconds, noticing that it was rather thicker than usual and had grown a few inches over the last year. Fingers trembling slightly, Harry grabbed his package and pulled, while enjoying a gentle tickling sensation, pausing every now and then to scratch his ass, which was itching like some weird crab. Holding his dick in one hand, Harry pulled out a belt, which he buckled tightly around it, as though frightened it might explode. Harry Potter propped open a large black leather cunt against the pillow. Harry pushed his dick inside it, he needed to exercise a lot of self-control, not to empty his balls at once. The tip of his dick shuddered, spraying Harry with spunk. Harry was grinning more broadly than ever. As long as he didn't leave spots of spunk on the sheets, his aunt and uncle need never know. Okay, and with that montage, here is somebody who is not me playing the game. Um, this is being played by a YouTube po poster by the name of Mr. Copyright Violator. Uh, he has a bunch of actual work time fun videos on his channel. Anyway, he beat the game, so I am really bad at it, so I just took his video. So far so good. Yeah, so still teacups here. That's like a blender, I think. Or like a casino machine. That's a boss stage with a Tengu demon, I think that's what those are. Yeah, I might be right. Correct me if I'm wrong. They're the little mischievous Japanese demons, kind of like Loki. I guess who's a god, not a demon, but whatever. <laughs> I like the lanterns in the background because they look really creepy. Yeah, they look like mouths. I can't tell what that is. I think it's a blender robot. Here's another Tengu demon. Oh, Microwave. And some sort of voodoo doll head or something like a voodoo head, a voodoo statue. I guess, yeah. You get a summon Dambala with it. That's all I remember from Voodoo, from my Gabriel Knight experiences. <laughs> and that is an upside down oh. Venus. Yeah, that's weird. And so the, the, the weights get added to your score. Oh my god, those pots take 10 minutes to make, what the hell? <laughs> No. Uh, so they get added to your score and then it's divided by 100. So it's, you know, he actually has 1055 right now. Or 1255. And there are 10 stages to this, so if I can't get past the first stage, it's pretty amazing that this guy gets past all of them. Do you just have to hit it? I don't know. Is it the same always, or...? No, no, they supply at different speeds, and you gotta punch, like the coffee cup, you gotta punch when it passes the mushroom, just right as it passes. It's a very slow punch, so it doesn't really start until... It takes forever for it to reset, too, so... Ah, uh, so it's pretty much you just need to know every single item. Yeah, you just gotta know where to time it, pretty much. See, look at those bricks. There's no way you're gonna hit those bricks if you're gonna... Oh, that's just one brick. <laughs> There's gonna be more bricks later. Ooh, spoilers. Yeah. Ah! 
Who the hell is throwing this at you, by the way? The mysterious karate master. It's like a shark statue, or is that like a whale statue or something? Uh, it's like a goldfish to me. Whales aren't fishes. They're warm blooded. See? Oh yeah, that is like painful right there. Whoa. And then you gotta slow microwave afterwards just to fuck you up. Yeah. Damn. What was that? I don't have no idea. Some sort of electronics. <laughs> the bull is probably my favorite just because <laughs> it becomes steak. Uh, that's the power of karate. Yep. This is like a boss rush stage, I guess. And BH apparently st uh, obviously stands for Baito Hell, which is uh, ah. the name of the game in Japanese. That's a uh, drunken mayor didn't hit the right button. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, this is the contingency plan if the drunken mayor fucks up. <laughs> then we have Karate Superstar. Yep. <laughs> Damn you, Chiba City, and your nuclear warheads. <laughs> Look at this. Seriously, how do you expect me to beat that? Yeah. That's impressive. Okay, final boss, come on. It's like a computer or something, I have no idea. Kinda, but it's weird looking. Another missile. And there we go, that's the whole game. No fancy ending or anything. Wow. Just give me like 500 more dollars for that. Yeah, time for emails! Tiny lucky glasses. Cash for you. Just like a conservative, always so strict. <laughs> oh, Ken knows. I bet he always things. leans to the right, too. <laughs> That's hints about a uh, pollinator. Oh, yeah. He's not very good at tapping the button lightly. And this is like out of several bad animes. <laughs> is it? Probably. And. Vernon. Why do we even bring up Vernon emails? It's the same crap every time. I got so much money. Just a braggart. Yep. Oh no. Dragnet meeting. <laughs> he means for the fish. Yeah, I know, it just sounds so funny. It's a great show. Vernon and nude beaches. I got two emails from Vernon about nude beaches, by the way. There's going to be a second one coming up. What would Vernon look like? It's a mystery. I have very androgynous. Oh, I'll give for Ken. What was this, fishing? Oh. Who might have slipped time, time slip. <laughs> <laughs> He's not sure. Could just be an actor. Thanks, Mr. College. He has, he has the best image. So intense. I like how that's that's what adulthood is. It's once you hit 100,021. <laughs> that's when you hit adulthood. I got a ways to go. See you again, little new beach. <laughs> strange, strange Vernon. Yeah. All right. Now you might not notice it, but it says system S I S T U M Clash Inc. 
on there. C A L C L A S H. Nice. And there's the black elf from uh, William Hell. Oh yeah. Or from uh, Princess whatever that word is. I don't know. Okay, I can't tell about the same thing. Why this makes textbooks no longer boring? Just adding <laughs> little stamps of men in it. Use them as toilets. I don't know. Not too many really excited uh, pieces here this time. No Lord of the Rings references in this one. Or Star Wars references. <laughs> I don't know anything about Shogi. No. It looks surprising like chess. I mean, when I'm reading about the pieces and things like that, it sounds like just chess rebranded. Ooh. I'm not sure what South, South American <laughs> style really means. Is <laughs> yeah, it deep fried? Or do they mean South American as in, like, South America, South America? Yeah, I don't know. No idea. <laughs> like a collection of Buddha sutras. That would be awesome. And here's the one of the candies, I guess, the mugwort uh -huh. dumpling. Never really had mugwort before. Doesn't sound like it yeah. tastes good. No, it doesn't. This is not a. Here's a scissors word. stamp. I think we've seen rock and paper already. So here's scissors. <laughs> Japanese love their scissors. And here's the bonsai chick. Popular with the elderly. Alright. And here's your horoscope of the day. Zodiac of the day. How many times am I going to screw that up? <laughs> anyway, uh, see you guys oh, yeah. later. See ya. Man.